Hello and welcome to the fifth entry on Brush DC Motors. My name is Pedro Arango Ramirez and today we will discuss the importance of current regulation when driving a brushed DC motor. We will expand on the concepts of back EMF, motor startup current, and motor stall current. In order to understand why current regulation in a motor is important, we must first understand the fundamental concept of back electromotive force, or back EMF for short. When a voltage is applied to the motor, a current will begin to flow through its windings. However, as the motor begins to spin, Lorentz law implies that an opposite voltage will appear that acts in opposition of the current that caused the movement. This apparent voltage that causes a lower current than what the input voltage dictates is known as back EMF. In other words, the current through a motor will be dependent on the voltage applied across the windings and the back EMF generated by a motor's rotation. The greater the voltage applied to the motor, the faster the motor spins, which increases the back EMF. It is important to note that as the motor speed increases, the back EMF increases, eventually leading to a stability point between the applied voltage, the friction in the motor, and the back EMF. Here we can see a motor connected to a 5 volt voltage source. As soon as the circuit is closed, the current through the motor will begin to rise quickly up to 5 amps. However, as the motor spins, the back EMF will begin to develop, which will oppose the input voltage, leading to a current of 3 amps. For schematic purposes, we can represent this back EMF as an opposite voltage source that only exists when the motor is spinning. The current and voltage source can be calculated by using Ohm's law. In this graph, we can appreciate the relationship between motor voltage, current to the motor, and back EMF voltage generated. We can see that the current quickly rises when we introduce a voltage. This will be causing the motor to spin. As the motor ramps up in speed, back EMF will develop. The back EMF will in turn cause the current to decrease. Eventually, it will reach a stability point that is the result of motor voltage and back EMF. Notice that this graph is describing the circuits we presented on the previous slide. Now we know that the motor's current will eventually stabilize once the motor has come to speed. However, before this, we have to face a problem in the short time that the motor winds up. Inrush current, or peak starting current, is a short-lived transient spike in current that occurs when input voltage is applied as a motor winds up to speed. While current can't change instantaneously, increase in a motor due to its inductive component, it still can reach dangerously high levels. If left unchecked, this inrush current can completely ruin a system. Therefore, we need to set a max current level that the motor will not exceed. This limit is known as I-trip. If the current exceeds the threshold, the FETs in the H-bridge will be disabled and current will recirculate. The way in which this happens depends on the specific method of current regulation use. Consult the datasheet of your driver to find out more about the different ways current regulation can work. However, if current rises even faster than iTrip can keep it under control, then the TI drivers feature an overcurrent protection that will protect the driver and the motor by disabling the H-bridge. Additionally, if a high current is sustained for long enough such that the device reaches dangerous temperature, over thermal protection will activate and disable the driver. Each driver has different levels of OCP and OTP. Please consult your datasheet in order to see how OCP and OTP will affect your specific driver. As we discussed, the current to the motor is going to be dependent on the voltage applied 
and the back EMF developed from the motor spinning. So what would happen if the motor would suddenly stop spinning? A very similar phenomenon as inrush current but in reverse and faster. The back EMF would no longer be present and it would cause the current of the motor to spike. This condition is what we call stall current. However, you will notice that the stall condition is different from the inrush condition. It is important to the driver to be able to detect when the current is spiking due to a stall situation in the motor. Many TI drivers have ways of detecting a stall and be programmed to react in different ways to it. A way in which TI devices can also detect current changes is through the use of iProPi. iProPi creates a voltage drop through an adjustable resistor that is proportional to the current going through the motor. With iProPi, a small resistor can be used since the current mirror scales down the motor current. Therefore, the resistor does not have to dissipate the actual motor current, which will require a higher power rated resistor. Additionally, with iProPi, an external sensing amplifier is not required since the voltage at iProPi is scaled so that it can be directly connected to an MCU, as opposed to using a power sense resistor. This can be very advantageous as there is minimal to non-signal conditioning required, saving precious board space and design considerations. You can find more information on proper iProPi usage and design tips in the link in the research section below. It is important to consider the demands and features you need from a driver. From stall detection to iProPi current regulation, the TI portfolio is here to help you out. To find more about driving motors, technical resources, and products, visit ti.com slash motors dash drivers slash overview dot html. And as always, thank you for watching.